what I was looking forward to traveling down to Mexico is, you know, all the fans and all the people and they're invested in the racing community and they really like it and they're um, the best fans and, and best community I've been out to. It was pretty cool cruising in with all the teams, like we're just all getting a police escort down to the track and it was a really cool drive, you know, beautiful views and, and we're driving on cliff sides and it's just really cool to uh, see how big and open the ocean was down there, you know, and the beaches were really awesome as well. No traffic or anything, we just flew straight by red lights because the police, they were just stopping the traffic. My grandpa actually lived down here next to uh, Ensenada. It's cool to be able to come down here, you know, he recently just passed away and um, I have a lot of family come out here, a lot of aunts, uncles and, and cousins, so it's very cool to be in his hometown. Racing down in Mexico, it, it's really special because like literally the track's right on the beach. You like walk over like 100 feet to the right and look out and it's just the ocean. Just the beach and the ocean and you see the, the Estero Beach Hotel Resort and it's a, uh, it's a really cool track set up down there. The plan for Mexico was definitely to push for a top five finish. Arizona was, was good, you know, top six position, that, that's awesome, but wanted to race good for my family, all my friends were out there, so the plan was to get a top five. The community down there is, uh, it's very cool, you know, you, you have a lot of awesome people you meet down there and a lot of interesting people. The food down there is awesome. You have taco shops everywhere, like right around the corner of the taco shop. It's very cool down there. And, you know, growing relationships and, and growing connections. And, you know, every every time you go down there, you, you meet new people. Get the haircut in Mexico. Yeah. Racing with the uh, Mexican flag body was very cool because everyone just loved it and it got a lot of attention. We had a, a meet and greet schedule down there, um, right by the schools at a park, to hand out t-shirts, give out snacks and food, and sign posters and take pictures. It's definitely like overwhelming experience. It was very cool to, you know, just see the kids and see them smiling. And it was a humbling experience to be able to sign autographs to that many kids. There was hundreds of them down there. And Greg Cazo from Lucas Oil came down and was throwing out Lucas Oil stickers, lanyards, everything. It was awesome. It was a cool experience to, to do. And I was glad to be able to do it and, and make kids' dreams come true to you know, see an actual Pro 2 truck and, and meet me, a driver, and meet Trevor Briska. It was very awesome. It was a cool experience to do, and I'm definitely going to plan on doing that for next year as well. Viva la Mexico!
the Stereo Beach track, it's actually pretty flat, but very technical as well. A lot of dirt, so the, just the grip is unbelievable. The tire is always hooking up. It's a very fun, fast, technical, and, and grippy track. Dude, I got the bike so gnarly that one time. Hey, you know why? Ricky, completely off the throttle. When you turn the truck, yeah. turn the truck, no big deal. The other two times, you did great. Track is really fun and it's challenging, but you know, it's it, that's the whole part about being a race car driver. That, that first time I went to the post section, I got so sketchy. Overall, I think the whole crew and, and I was happy as well. Um, everything ran smoothly that whole day. A couple, couple, couple little things that fix you just half a truck here, half a truck there. But you're, you're on, just drive a little harder now. That's all we got to do. Yeah. Just drive a little harder, drive a little harder, get a tenth here, a tenth there. Hey, around the whole track, it's six tenths of a second, and we're, we're in the game. If you get to lean three and above right now, that's all. it's all like frosting yeah. up there right now. I mean, it's like going to the sand dunes, you know. You have to get more of a run off of turn one, we're going to call that coming into the moguls. It has to start at the exit of turn one, and you have got to go <gasps> the first time and just pin it. So the only change is basically my, my spotter, Corey Cruzman, was telling me is run the bottom line. It was super hard to uh, run higher lines just because of the dirt and how much grip there was up top. Running the bottom line was easier to get a rotation down there and a better drive off the corner, but overall, I, everything went good. <laughs> Truck ran good, the suspension was good, the power was good, the grip, the tires were running great. The only thing that stuck out to me was just this little popping sound I kept hearing. It was super weird. It would just it would happen all the time, just little popping sounds. I really didn't know what to think about it. I didn't know what it was and I was just super confused. Let's call I, I wanna to talk to Adam. Alright. So, so no we couldn't hear it. Sounds him. perfect. Ricky. So we're in in the turns, out of the turns, going in the turns? Everywhere it's popping. I came in and I told him about it and I showed him the GoPro footage, but the problem was you couldn't hear it in the GoPro footage. Like I was the only one that could hear it and no one was really believing me. They was they were saying, Oh, there's no popping sound, there's nothing at all. As you're coming out of turn seven after the big after the jump, mm -hmm. the final down to the final straightaway, even before you hit the flag stand it's popping? Yeah. I can hear it. I can hear it. It's just you can't hear it from the outside, I can hear it from the inside. You hear that, Adam? We called up my motor guy, Adam Wick, and he told us a, uh, a few options we could do, but the crew, they, they didn't really know what it was, they didn't know what to do, and it just kind of frustrated me, but I had the race on it. Ricky G, Ricky Gutierrez, good to see you, man. We got so much to talk about. First thing, you're only 16 years old. You just got your driver's license, but you're out here at Pro 2, banging it up with some of the best of them. What's that like? Yeah, it's, it's pretty surreal. I mean, like, it's a lot of pressure and a lot of stress, but, you know, I'm having fun and, and racing against all the top guys, all the legends, Robert Cacker and Brian Deegan, all of them. It's, it's pretty cool, and I'm always learning, always improving every time I go on the track, so we're gonna see what we can do today, qualify seventh, and hopefully make it and give the crowd a good show. And I always get nervous before a race, you know, I always want to do good and I had a lot of people out there watching me, especially because I had that Mexican flag body on and all my family and friends were out there, so I really wanted to do good for them. Promedio. 
right off the start in the second turn in that bootleg, RJ just started barrel rolling like six times, like it was gnarly. And I remember we're going into the whoop section and Brian came down, took my nose out and we're just sliding. And I spun out in the whoop section and we all slowed down and we we're going back to a full restart. I was a little disappointed in the way I was driving right now just because it was uh, it was super hard to get grip and I was sliding out a lot. On one of the laps I over jumped going into the last corner and hit a sidewall like a big berm into the last corner. It was a big berm and I hit it super hard and I was just driving down the straightaway and my truck was just like waddling like super loose like the tail end was just shaking the whole time like it felt like I had a flat. I pulled off into the hot pit that very lap and pulling up I stopped right next to my crew and they said I, they were yelling like I had no flat, I had no flat, I gotta go back out. I guess just my whole entire wheel packed with dirt. Once that happens it just feels like you have a flat and it's just loose everywhere and you know I couldn't believe it. I was just so mad at myself. It was super hard to get my head back into the race and I couldn't get off my head that you know I basically kind of just screwed myself that whole entire race. I was all the way in the back, I was like a lap down from it and I got lapped by the top leaders, everything was just going wrong, and I was just so mad at myself. I ended up placing ninth place. That was not where I wanted to end up to finish. I know my dad wasn't happy at the way I, I handled the situation, and I did have a, a slight attitude adjustment and apologized to my team and my dad. And after that whole race, I kind of zoned off and and was thinking about ways I could have avoided that situation from happening and I was just, it was just replaying in my head over and over again. I had to brush it off and, you know, I had to be professional about it. I had to be an adult and, you know, I had to grow up and focus on tomorrow. For Sunday's race, I was trying not to think about Saturday's race at all. I was just trying to focus on today and, you know, how I'm gonna do good and how I'm gonna do today. Another motor guy came through our, to our pit and got his laptop out and started pulling data. And he ended up finding out there wasn't as much fuel going into the carburetor. So we made an adjustment to the carburetor and we were gonna see how it ended up for qualifying. And if it fixed it, it, it'd be awesome. Qualifying, the truck felt great. Everything was going smoothly. I didn't hear the popping sound at all, so it felt like I was getting a lot more power out of the motor from that. I qualified seventh place, and I felt like I was ready to go for that race. After qualifying, you know, especially after yesterday's problems and issues, you know, I would expect myself to be nervous and and be a little scared to hop back in the truck and, and race after a tough day. But um, I felt good going into the race and I was brushing off all the issues and problems I had from yesterday. I was looking forward and I was feeling great, you know, qualifying went well and I was starting in a good position for the race. I felt like everything was gonna go well. Green flag drops and I'm right on Brian Deegan's bumper and we're going into the bootleg into turn one. My truck was sliding good, sliding good, and then it hit a little rut and it just started to over rotate. The truck came in and hit my front end. It just snapped the wheel over to the right and I had my thumbs inside the steering wheel so it just took my whole wrist with it and I just, I just heard a little snap in the wrist and it just, pain started to set in right away. It hurt so bad, like I knew right away it, it, it broke the wrist and I drove around for like two laps trying to drive with my right hand, but I couldn't because the pain hurt so bad and after the second lap I just pulled in and, and called it a day because it, it just hurt so bad and it was just so disappointing. You know, I just felt so bad for my crew, you know, they worked so hard that whole entire week and weekend and to end the weekend like that, you know, with a broken wrist just definitely sucks and that's definitely not the way I wanted to end the weekend. I could hear the trucks going by the straightaway still and I was just super bummed I wasn't able to finish the race and, and power through it, but the pain just, just hurt so bad. 
so far this whole season has just been it's been a whole rough season we haven't had one smooth weekend always had a problem and always had a setback every single race but this is what we signed up for and this is like the life of a professional racer you know you have problems all the time and i'm not going to quit i'm going to keep pushing forward